Kenny Carter, England's crown prince, has recovered from, uh, well, a rather sluggish opening, a third place only. Bo Peterson next to him there in white. We move in amongst the bikes, of course, the tyres worth, what, about £25 a time. They normally change them uh, for each race, such as the perfectionism in British Speedway and World Speedway at the moment. Looking at the lineup for Heat 11 on the inside, Andy Graham in red with three points. Kenny Carter, a third and a win, and he did change machines for his second ride, and that could be important. Grid three has Bo Peterson White on the outside, Vassilov Werner from the Pirates of Pool and Czechoslovakia in yellow and black. Carter, though, in grid two, perhaps the one to keep our eye on. That's away they go, and Carter has got a flyer. Oh, what a start from Kenny Carter. And left completely was Andy Graham on the inside. He really did uh, lose his concentration momentarily. He's at the back, but Carter's in front. In second place, it's Peterson. Third is Werner. Coming through into third place, so Andy Graham. There's Carter. And... Uh, Running right on the boards there, way out of our picture, was Werner. But Carter was unaware of that, and unaware of anything apart from the fact he's in front and going for home. Absolutely tearing through our picture. Averaging around uh, 50 miles an hour plus times here have been very fast indeed. The track record has gone a couple of times for the technical amongst you. And Carter is stretching away. And after that lap's first time out, he really has looked different class again. He's going to win Heat 11. Holding on for second place, Bo Peterson. Third was Andy Graham. Carter, though, moves on to seven points overall. His eyes firmly fixed on that £5,000 first prize. I mean, well, regret that lap's first time out, but it's still early days, and Carter may still retrieve the situation. Here is the start again. You can see Carter has his head down and is well set. Graham has been left alarmingly on the inside. Just look there, Carter must be about 10 lengths clear of him as they hit the corner, and no man uh, has the right to that sort of acceleration except Kenny Carter. Well, he 12 coming up, and... Uh, it could well be this is the decisive one that sorts out the destination of that £5,000 first prize because we have the two unbeaten riders, Denmark's Hans Nielsen, he's in blue, just taking the long, uh, deliberate walk out into the arena. And Dennis Segalos from America, he'll be in yellow and black on the outside on the grid. And Nielsen, well, he's learned an awful lot about psychology and speedway from his mentor. That's Oli Olsen, of course, the Great Dane. It is the two uh, unbeaten riders who are playing Kidology now as we settle down for Heat 12. Just to remind you, there are two other riders in here. Dave Jessup has won, and he's no mug. And on grid three, it's Yuri Stansel. So the lineup for Heat 12 on the inside, Jessup three points. Next to him, Nielsen unbeaten. Grid three, Stansel one point. On the outside, Sagalos unbeaten. So could this be the race? That sees the winner of the £5,000 first prize, and they're away. And it is Sigalos, as we thought, who gets the break from the outside. Nielsen is second, and it really is between these two as Stansel comes around the outside, and it is Sigalos who's breaking clear. Sigalos goes clear around the pit corner. Nielsen chasing hard, but he's got some work to do now. is the battle and can Hans Nielsen from Denmark and Birmingham possibly find the drive it hasn't really been a great track for passing and Sigalos as we know so well when he gets his nose in front does take some catching and Nielsen's moving closer Sigalos too is aware of a quick glimpse over his inside shoulder they're coming round for the last lap and here comes Hans Nielsen and he really is working hard trying the outside Nielsen knows that 5,000 may rest on this lap, trying down the inside now. Tagalos seems to have eyes in his crash helmet, has counted his every move, and he's not going to catch him now unless something really disastrous happens. Tagalos goes over the line, three points for him, two for Nielsen, one for Stansel. And Tagalos it is who emerges as the unbeaten rider after heat 12. And we wonder, we can but wonder, if that is going to be the race that sorts out the destination of the £5,000 British Open title.
So let's have a look at the last lap again. They're just coming out to the last lap flag. You'll see Sigalov takes a glance there and sees the attack could be coming from the outside and moves out to mid and outside line on the track to counter that move from Nielsen. Nielsen tries the outside run and as Sigalos has moved across he tries to swing back inside but again the American is aware and as they go down the straights he looks in complete command he moves across to shut that avenue down for Nielsen. Nielsen has really nowhere to go he's pointed all wrong for a really serious attack and as they come out of the corner it's Sigalos setting sail for the chequered flag and uh, well maybe that 5,000 pound check as well. Dennis, three rides, maximum points. So how are you looking at this British Open now? I'm looking pretty good and feeling pretty confident. You know, like you said, I've got, got three wins under my belt and uh, looking good. The bike's running excellent and I uh, don't have any real worries now. Did you have any worries on the last lap of that heat? Well, I knew Hansi was right there, you know, but um, all you could do is keep your head down and your butt up in the air and just go, you know, and just uh, kind of watch for him here and there and uh, hope, you know, hopefully that you pick up the drive that you need just to stay in front. And so with the field having completed three rides, we have a clear leader on the board. Dennis Sigalos from the United States and Ipswich on nine points. Jointly in second place, Hans Nielsen and Larry Ross in this winner-takes-all British Open. In fourth place, Kenny Carter and Kelly Moran. And logically and realistically, they are the only riders now left in with a shout for the title. And Dennis Sigalos who says everything's going so well for him and looking very confident and feeling very confident comes out for heat 13 and this again is an important race for him because he's got Peter Collins in there on the outside that's him in the yellow and black helmet color and he also has Larry Ross and Ross it is who's breathing down his neck on eight points so the lineup for again the most important heat heat 13 Dennis Sigalos unbeaten on the inside nine points Larry Ross has eight Vaclav Werner has one only and Peter Collins on the outside on five. We have seen Sigalos shake off Hans Nielsen, one of his rivals. Can he now shake off Larry Ross, who has been a real threat and a real surprise. Here we go for Heat 13. Sigalos on the inside, next to him Ross, then Werner on the outside, Peter Collins. Oh, Larry Ross was so impatient and was perhaps just a little lucky that the tapes did not break because if they had referee Arthur Mellows would have had no option but to exclude him and that would have been anticlimactic and settling down or are they Ross it is who turns around he might just have stalled and that's an unusual sight in world speedway Ross coming back into line again we fancy the tension beginning to build we can almost feel it building up here heat 13 Sigalos again on the inside Ross Werner, Collins, here we go. And away this time, and Collins has got a marvellous break from the outside. Peter Collins, while all the attention was riveted inside, Collins it was who got away. Second place is Sigalos, third is Ross. And again, our minds go back to Los Angeles when we were watching for Pedal and Carter. We remember Collins got away and led that one. And here he is leading what could be the decisive race in the British Open, and he's in front of Sigalos and Sigalos is not making up much ground on him and Ross it must be said isn't making much impact on Sigalos uh, Collins has lost his helmet colour but he hasn't lost the lead he still leads tracks drying out a bit Ross is coming back in the picture on Sigalos's back wheel and the lanky California took a quick glance and knows he has got Larry Ross and this one could open up the British Open Still Collins in front, and it is vintage Collins, and he has left his effort just a little bit too late, really, to realistically be in with the chance of the £5,000. But Collins wins it. Second place, Sigalos. Third is Ross. So we haven't got an unbeaten rider in the championship, and Peter Collins, number one on his back, has made the British Open just that, wide open. And here is a slow motion of that start, and we were watching the inside, and Collins it was, who gets away like a rocket as uh, Werner rears a bit. Look at the lead that Collins has built up. Really, he's, what, oh, three, four lengths clear as he hits the corner. And although Sigalos closes up on him, there was no catching Peter Collins. Let's look at it from another angle. Watch Collins on the angle. Oh, he was moving when the tapes went. Brilliant piece of anticipation. Let's be charitable. Oh, over he comes, but he's well set. 
Heat 14 on the inside, Phil Crump from Mildura, Victoria, with five points to his credit. He's in red. Dave Jessup, uh, who's faded uh, a bit dramatically after a good start, a win and then two last places. Andy Graham, pretty steady, with four points, a win and two, or rather a second and two thirds. And Kelly Moran, the rider on the outside, he has seven points. And uh, with all his main rivals dropping points, it still might be possible. There's one of the rivals who'll be watching this race with interest. That's Hans Nielsen. Moran with a win here. Could get right back within touching distance of that £5,000 check. Here we go for heat 14. We're right in with them there. Moran's got a lot of space on the outside. And they break and up to the first corner. Who's to show? He's got the inside crump and the outside Moran. What a beautiful piece of overtaking. Oh, yes. Not to be deterred, Kelly Moran goes clear. Second place is Crump, third is Jessup. And uh, incredibly, the track's getting a bit dusty now with the riders complaining it had been overwatered. The promoters, the British Speedway Promoters Association, have restricted their spraying with the crop sprayer. It's getting dusty and that's inconvenience in the fans. Into the last lap, around 385 metres of White City, of course, this track so famous for many years as the home of British athletics. Now it's uh, the wheels that are carving it up and Moran up front is doing wheelies and playing to the gallery. Over the line he goes on his back wheel, he wins it. Second place was Crump, third was Jessup. And Kelly Moran from Huntington Beach, California, world at number four, might still take this £5,000 check. Another win there, takes him on ten points, and there's a man who knows what he's got to do. Hans Nielsen knows that his rivals are picking up points, and he just cannot relax. Well, it's true we had some controversy here at White City when the overseas final of the World Championship was staged, when Bruce Pennell, the world champion, admitted he threw a race to help his fellow countrymen. Now, this is the biggest prize in the history of British Speedway, £5,000, and for the first time, the Sports Controlling Authority, the FIM, have appointed a referee to watch the actions in the pits. There's John Whitaker, one of Britain's most experienced referees, he is just in the pits there, making sure there is no jiggery-pokery. An interesting development. And this British Open really coming to a fascinating, absorbing climax because really it is now wide open. And uh, Hans Nielsen there having dropped one point knows that if he wins his next two rides, at the very least he's going to be in a runoff for the £5,000, the richest prize ever, we remind you. But standing in his way in heat 16, we've got Kenny Carter. And Carter's going to be in the inside. Carter, having dropped two points, is the man that they all have to beat and they all have to keep an eye on. Carter's on the inside. There he is with seven points. Next to him, Jan Anderson has five. We mustn't discount him. We've done that to uh, our disadvantage in the past. Grid three has Nielsen, having dropped one point to Sigalos. And on the outside, Kai Nemi. And he, too, has been a spoiler when the mood takes him. So heat 16... Not one unbeaten rider, Carter regaining ground, having changed machines after a disappointing third place first time out. Nielsen's in grid three, not a good one. Here we go, heat 16, and Carter and Nielsen it is who get clear. And Carter swings right out to try and cover Nielsen, he's gone out too far. And that must be construed as a mistake by Carter because Nielsen took his opportunity. And I really think that Kenny Carter perhaps was looking for Nielsen to take him out and went right past the corner. A costly, costly move. Nielsen took his opportunity, and now Carter must chase. And he isn't really making much ground. We've seen that Hans Nielsen has twice broken the track record here at White City. Doesn't uh, hang about when he gets in front. There is Nielsen. Carter's making no impact at all. Third place is Anderson. And my word, it is going to be interesting having another look at that first corner. Because although Carter made the break, it looked as though he swung out to try and stifle any attack by this man, Hans Nielsen. Nielsen swung inside, read his mind, and he's gone clear. And uh, he's going to win Heat 16 unless something uh, unforeseen happens around the last two corners. 
Nelson wins. That's so important. Over the line he goes. Carter, his chance is surely now gone. In second place. Third was Anderson. And there is Nelson. And uh, Nelson really knows perhaps that his opponent made a mistake there. He certainly grabbed his opportunity. And that was a really incredible moment. And here it is now. Let's watch Carter. Now Carter's on the inside. He certainly gets away the cleanest and crispest. Now he comes up to the corner. Nielsen is in second place. Now what does happen here? Carter goes right past the corner. And he goes out and out and out. And Nielsen is left with room really to drive a steamroller through. Takes that moment and goes on for the chequered flag. Well, Kenny Carter, what happened that time to you? Well, I made a fantastic start. And I went out to the dirt, but there was none there, and I went straight through the fence. <laughs> why, did, why did you do that? Well, I thought there's going to be somebody on the outside coming round, and I've seen a few people in the last few races go around it. So I decided to go out, you know, because I thought Hans were going to go around. And if you watch, I go out to the dirt there. And, and, what, and just, the dirt's not there? No, there. I mean, I've gone to the dirt there, and they just didn't, and I'm just sliding, I just can't turn it. So that one's down to you in a big way. Um, that's, well, it's, you know, it's just one of them things, isn't it? And that's £5,000. Yeah. Any chance of that gone, I think, now? Oh, it's gone now, yeah. It's not been your week, really? It's been a bad week for me, I tell you. Bad no. two weeks. Never mind, you'll be back. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. And so, Carter, perhaps England's last chance at this British Open now, out of contention as we look at the leaderboard with four rides completed each. We see Hans Nielsen back in contention on 11 points, joint leader with Dennis Segalos, Kelly Moran, has 10, Larry Ross has 9, Carter back on 9, and Peter Collins just in the picture now on 8. Well, Dennis Segalos knows that although he's dropped a point, he's still very, very much in with a tilt at this £5,000 prize. Coming out here for Heat 18, where he has to face one of the big threats. Kenny Carter from England will be on the inside of him, and these two have had a couple of torrid clashes this season. Heat 18 then with Sigalos, the one to watch. He's dropped one point and he knows that a win here will put him in a runoff at the very least with Hans Nielsen for the £5,000. And remember, it's winner take all. There is nothing at all to be gained from second place. So Sigalos with it all to do. There he is with Carter on the inside and these two have had uh, the odd brush in recent weeks. And Carter, of course, no lover of Americans. Grid 2 has Trump on the outside, it's Jan Sarsch. But it's Carter and Segalos who surely will be looking for as Heat 18 gets underway. And it is Segalos and Carter. And they get to the corner. And Segalos has just got the drop. Or has he? Carter levelling away. And Carter's just moved in front. And Segalos has fought back around the outside. And that was almost a carbon copy of their world final clash. Although in that instance, Carter was on the outside. And he was the one who broke clear. Segalos and Carter battling down the inside well we saw how he tried to move out in the dirt against Han Nielsen with uh, disastrous results not making that mistake again but Segalos is in front and now Carter has all the work to do and this white city track which has got very slick and dusty is not conducive to passing Carter will need something superhuman here he comes down the inside and Segalos aware of him and again we have some speedway race Into the last lap, still Segalos holding on. Carter still trying to find something extra, still trying to find that little extra bit of legs. I don't think he's going to get up. Way back in third place, it's Phil Crump, but that's purely for the record books as Segalos wins Heat 18. Carter is second, Crump is third, and that means that Segalos is back in the club room. He has dropped one point only, and his main rival, Hans Nielsen, has it all to do, and we might still have a man-to-man -man runoff for the £5,000. It was such a tense first corner. Carter on the inside there and Segalos. And it looked like Carter just got the break with Segalos in grid three coming with him. Now, as they hit the corner, they were wheel-to-wheel. -wheel. And Carter, it has to be said, rode a scrupulously fair turn. He might well have been inclined to move out and take Segalos out. But the American just got the drop at the vital moment. Carter's half a length clear here, but Segalos gets his wheels back in line, and there is just an extra little bit of drive out there on the outside. You can see him making his move there now, 
and that was a decisive moment and that may well be the moment when £5,000 goes to Denis Segalos. Well there is almost a familiar sight at the moment, Kenny Carter for the second time in just over a week, down on his luck, head down, crossing the centre green, going home from a big meeting empty-handed. But not so this man, Denis Segalos, who now will look at this last race, Heat 20, to see if his great rival for this £5,000 check, Hans Nielsen, can force a runoff with him. We remind you that Segalos has finished his five rides. He has 14 points. Nielsen must win Heat 20 to force a runoff with him for the richest purse in British Speedway history. He'll be on the outside and he's got Kelly Moran next to him and the Americans of course are so close and Kelly will be sure to be bursting a blood vessel to try and help his fellow countrymen. On the inside, Les Collins, who's perked up after a bad start, won his last race. Vassilov Verne is in blue, Kelly Moran is in white, Nielsen on the outside, the kid who was so skint when he started Speedway that his villagers, there's Sigalas watching, I'm sure he'll be watching that outside grid. Nielsen so broke, the villagers had to subsidize him in now with a chance for the richest prize in Speedway history. The gate is going to be so important, and he has got away, and so too has Kelly Moran, and it's Moran and Nielsen, and on the inside it is Les Collins, and they're almost locked up together, but Nielsen it is who breaks clear, second place is Moran, and that really was a pretty hair-raising first couple of corners, but when they broke, it was Nielsen in front, and we have seen how terribly difficult it is to get uh, from the back, although Moran has no fears about... Uh, having an optimistic double inside or out. Nilsson in front. And it must be said, Moran is being dropped. This is Hans Nilsson. So many people felt he was a real threat for the world title. And I must be honest, I thought uh, that as well. But he had a terrible opening ride in Los Angeles. Segalos knows that it isn't all over. Watching from the pits. He knows he's got four laps and they should be really torrid laps. The runoff for the richest prize ever. We could hardly have uh, scripted a better finish. Hans Nielsen, well, he's going to go into that runoff. He wins heat 20. Second was Moran. Third was Les Collins. And Sigalos looking pensive in the pit because he now knows he has a rare race on his hands for the biggest payday in Speedway history. Well, at the beginning there, Dennis Segalos, I think you thought that your countryman, Kelly Moran, was going to get it for you. Yeah, I thought he was going to make it there off of, the, off of three, uh, about 30 yards off. Hands just seemed to pull him just that little bit going in the first corner, but uh, that means now we have to have a runoff. There's no problem. Here it is. See there, Kelly just lifted a little bit right there, and then Hands just got the drop on him a bit. Kind of moved out in the dirt a little bit, Hands did. Kelly tried to swing back underneath him there, but it seems to slope off a little bit there in the first corner. See Hans get a bit of drive there. Just seems to get the run around Kelly right there, and then he's gone. Hans Nielsen, Dennis Segalos was watching that with us on our monitor pits, and I think he thought he'd won it at the start with Kelly Moran coming out there with you. Yeah, well, I got a little bit more drive around the outside there, and that was it. But uh, now it's all up to the runoff, I suppose. Well, what do you think is going to happen in this runoff? Well, it's hard to tell. Dennis has been going well, and I feel I've been going well, so uh, it's going to be a hard race. And we could hardly have asked for a better climax to this first ever British Open. £5,000 the prize and uh, only sympathy for second places. Segalos on the inside, Nielsen on the outside. It's going to be so important this start because it has proved to be terribly difficult to get from the back. So this is the moment. Away they go and it is Nielsen, oh, I think, who's just got the drop. Nielsen gets to the corner in front. Segalos is second and Nielsen who has looked really very speedy when he's hit the front all afternoon. Now he just must kick on for home. But here comes Segalos and he isn't going to give in without a battle. And Nielsen has swung out to where the dirt is on the outside, where he can uh, out-circumnavigate Segalos. At least I imagine that's his theory. Segalos will swing around, duck and dive and try and tease him inside or outside. It's a fair old race. Here comes Segalos again around the outside. And will he try and swing back? And he's moved around the outside and they're absolutely neck and neck. And Segalos has gone by in a masterpiece. 
of uh, manoeuvrability and manipulation. And it's into the last lap. And Sigalos is in front and kicking on for his life. And now Nielsen must try and find that bit of extra. What a super climax and what a fine ride by Dennis Sigalos. Who ever said it's all about getting out the gate first? He has disproved that. He goes over the line on his back wheel. £5,000 the richer. The stars and stripes forever is sounding around White City. The American domination of the big events continues. Dennis Sigalos has done it the hard way, but he's £5,000 richer after a speedway match race, which really will go into the books as something of a classic.